Hey, what's up guys? Welcome to the video. Today's vehicle is a 2012 Dodge Grand Caravan, and to be blunt, it's an absolute disaster. All right, taking a quick look around this minivan, and pretty well every inch of this thing is covered in dirt from front to back, and then the wheels were some of the dirtiest that I've ever seen and were absolutely covered in brake dust. Now moving inside, and it's immediately clear why this vehicle earned the disaster detail status, as the level of grime in here is unmatched by any other vehicle that I've detailed. Almost every single seat is heavily stained. The carpets are a total mess and every square inch of the inside needs to be deep cleaned. But just before we jump into the detail, take a quick second and subscribe to the channel and make sure you've got the bell on so you actually get notified when my new videos go live each week. All right, well now that you've seen what I'm up against today, I'm calling it now. This is at least a 15 hour detail, so let's get started. All right, so getting started on the pre-wash rinse here, and I figured I would give you guys a bit of the background on this van. So when the customer dropped it off, she was telling me that the van was originally her grandparents and she recently bought it from them. And then since she has young kids, that's why she wanted to get it fully detailed and clean because the vehicle has also been heavily smoked in. And fortunately, I was able to film her reaction after the detail. So make sure you stick around to the end to catch that. Now, if any of you are wondering how a vehicle actually gets this dirty, it really doesn't take much sometimes, uh, especially when you do a lot of driving on gravel roads like this van clearly has. Then you add in the spring melt that we've had lately and you get door jams that are absolutely full of dust and dirt caked on the exterior. So it's always important to hit the trim at different angles so I can make sure I get all that dirt and dust flushed out. Now, like you guys saw in the opening shots, these wheels were absolutely covered in black brake dust. And I was actually anticipating it was going to be really stuck on and difficult to remove. But fortunately, the pressure washer was able to do the bulk of the work here, which was really great to see. Now for any vehicle I get in with really dirty door jams, the easiest way to clean them is to hit them very carefully with the pressure washer and it can sometimes be helpful to pre-treat with a degreaser, but the buildup of dust that I was dealing with here really didn't require it and these came clean very easily. Now 
turning to the wheels and although they looked really clean after being sprayed off, there was still a little bit of brake dust on them. So using my Meguiar's wheel and tire cleaner and letting it sit for a minute, it's able to easily cut through that. And then when I agitate the wheels with a few different brushes, whatever brake dust or dirt that was left on those wheels can be easily rinsed off. Now getting some nice thick foam all over this fan to help loosen any remaining dirt on here. And I'll take the opportunity to go around with a detail brush and use it around any trim, emblems, and behind the gas door so I can get any dirt lifted out of there. Now while the van drip dries a little bit, I'll turn to these super dirty floor mats and I'll first start by spraying them off with the pressure washer to get all of the dirt and debris removed. And then using some all purpose cleaner, I'll hit them with the drill brush to finish them off and then just rinse them off after. All right, moving on to the massive job that this interior is going to be. And the first thing to do is get any of the customer's personal items removed from the vehicle, along with any garbage. And then because these second row seats were filthy and all the trim and carpet around them were really dirty too, I got to work on removing it all and getting the seats out to give myself a little more room to maneuver in here, but it'll also be a lot easier to clean the seats if they're outside of the vehicle. Now as I start on vacuuming here, I always go around with a detail brush to loosen up any dirt or grime hiding in the crevices or the cup holders. And I really wish that I could have shown you inside all the cup holders in here because these front ones were nearly as gross as those back ones. So using the brush will help get some of the debris out and then the rest of the grime I'll leave until I do the APC wipe down in a little bit. Now thankfully there wasn't too much for debris in here aside from what was around the console and I honestly have no idea what this pile of salmon colored stuff was. My first thought was that it was dried up vomit and the green stuff there looked like dried up pieces of lettuce. Definitely never seen that before and I'm very thankful that I'm wearing a mask and I don't have to breathe that nasty smell in.
All right, so moving to all these dirty carpets and seats, and I decided to start with the trunk area here so that it had the most amount of time to dry out before I stored the third row seats in here. And if any of you remember the last minivan I did, which was a Honda Odyssey, I was actually surprised to find that the carpets in this caravan were much better quality than the Hondas were, as the pile was a little bit longer, and I didn't have to make near as many passes to get all the solution out, and they were easier to clean overall. Here's a quick before and after on this section, and boom, it's perfectly clean and looks brand new again. Moving on to the super dirty driver's seat, and when extracting seats and carpets, it's always smartest to work your way top down. So I'll start with the back of the seat, so that way any overspray of the solution or agitation doesn't end up on clean carpets beneath it. And if any of you are curious as to why I didn't remove the front seats too, it's because with the console out and the fact that I had really good access to underneath these seats, it really wasn't necessary. I was able to reach everywhere that I needed to to wipe things down and the carpets underneath the seats weren't dirty. So as I probably mentioned before, the seats will only come out when it's actually necessary and I wouldn't be able to clean up to my standards with them still in the vehicle. Now, if any of you are curious, the drill brush I'm using here is definitely one of the more versatile tools that I have in my arsenal, as not only do they work really well for agitating dirty carpets, you can also use them on floor mats like you saw earlier, or on dirty tires, and they also come in a variety of colors and stiffnesses, so there is a ton of different uses for them. I've got the link for these and almost every other product and tool that I use in the description for you, so feel free to check those out. I would highly recommend picking some up.
Now, if you've ever noticed the carpet solution flying all over the vehicle when I use the drill brush, this is the exact reason that I always start with the carpets before moving to the interior trim. So you'll notice all the dust that was underneath the door sill plate there and just how dirty that area gets after extracting. So in order to work smart and save time, carpets are always the first thing that I start cleaning. Now, because there were so many really dirty sections of carpets and seats in here, and unfortunately I couldn't film them all because this video would have been way too long, I figured I would show you the before and afters of the sections that I couldn't film so you get a better idea of just how incredible the transformation was on this van. Now up here in the driver's footwell, the rubber floor mats in here really didn't offer very good coverage. So there are some very heavily soiled areas. So I'll spray on a fairly liberal amount of solution and really just make as many passes as it takes to get this looking presentable. And even though I know it's not going to look perfect, I'll do everything I can, including removing the trim pieces to get better access to it so I can clean it as best that I can. Here's all the dirty and nasty water sucked out of these seats and carpets. Gross. All right, so with the Bissell's work done, it's time to bust out my McCulloch steamer to start getting some of the dirt and nasty grime off all the interior trim. And what I'll typically do is use the brush attachment and some APC to agitate things and loosen up all that dirt then simply just wipe it clean with a microfiber towel. But if there's ever some really stuck on stuff in the cracks or crevices, using the steamer without the attachment on it can be really helpful as it delivers a much higher velocity blast of steam and can usually loosen up really stubborn gunk.
Moving back to the interior, and it probably doesn't show quite as well on camera, but absolutely every inch of the trim had some sort of dirt, grime, or crayon on it. So I started with just using APC and a detail brush as I normally do, but it quickly became apparent that wasn't quite enough to do the job. So I called in the big guns and used the steamer to loosen up all that gunk. And again, it just makes quick work of everything and is so much fun to use. So if any of you out there have kids who like to display their art on the inside of your vehicle, this McCulloch MC1375 steamer is capable of handling all kinds of spills and grime. So I would highly recommend checking it out. The link is down in the description for you. Now for these dirty pedals, I'll blast it with steam and the stiff bristled attachment to get them nice and clean. And I know I've seen a few people ask recently why I don't do the pedals before I extract the carpets. And the reason is because when I use the drill brush on the carpets, it tends to fling solution all over the place. So if they were already clean, I'd likely have to repeat work. It only takes a second to lay a towel down underneath and ensures the carpets stay clean. All right, now that I've got the entire interior cleaned, the second row seats clean and back in the van, I can get to work on making this interior pop. And for that, I'm using my favorite product, and that's 303's Aerospace Protectant, which is going to offer great UV protection, but also leave all the trim with a nice matte finish and deepen the look of whatever color the interior is. Moving back outside and to restore some depth and gloss to this paint, I'm using my Meguiar synthetic paint sealant and I'll always start by priming my pad and spreading around a toonie sized amount of the sealant or wax and then add a little bit more before I start on the first section. Now just before I call this detail done, because the smoke smell was so bad in here and the owner doesn't smoke and has kids, I'm using my ozone machine to neutralize those odor molecules and after letting it run for about 10 minutes, the smell is completely gone. Then I just let it air out for a bit after so the ozone molecules can dissipate.
look in there. It looks so new. <laughs> I have to look at that cup Yeah, there were some, some pretty drying spots. And all the stains are gone in the seeds. Yeah. And the branches. Wow. I love it. Yeah. It's cool. Yeah. No. Well, glad you're happy. Okay, I'll leave you with those ones. Thank you. Yeah, so absolutely. Much. I really want to step in it because it's so <laughs> close outside. Enjoy it. <laughs> All right, guys, and 16 hours later, I'm done with the van. I hope you enjoyed getting to see the owner's reaction when she picked it up. It turned out absolutely incredible. If you enjoyed the video, make sure you hit that thumbs up button and subscribe to the channel for more epic transformations like this. Enjoy the guitar outro, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Mm -hmm.